the mid-18th century, Scotland was a nation divided between the Highlanders, loyal to the Royal House of Stuart, and the Lowlanders, who supported King George II of England. In 1746, Prince Charles Stuart, known as Bonnie Prince Charlie, trying to reclaim the throne was defeated at the Battle of Culloden. The result for the Highlands was catastrophic. English reprisals were brutal, barbarous, and completely ruthless. Stuart supporters, known as Jacobites, were hunted down and then executed. But in 1751, five years later, there were still loyal Jacobites, risking their lives to keep the flame alive. The most famous of them all was Alan Breck Stewart. A man, a traitor, a deserter, and a wanted criminal goes by the name of Alan Breck Stewart. I have never heard of any such a man. Oh, he's what they call a Jacobite, a rebel against our true King George, God bless his majesty. And you say to me you never heard of such a man? I never did. There's a fine reward here, lad. One hundred guineas. But since your head seems to be so empty... Perhaps I'll fill it with some shot. I swear to God, I never heard of any such a man. Well said, Rory lad. Huh? Alan! <laughs> Alan, you, you misbegotten dog! <laughs> James. You're back. I am. <laughs> you rascal! I know it's not much, but it's all we could gather for the king in France. So, uh, what kind of feathers would these be, Alan? Some poor African parakeet, oh. I suppose. <laughs> Would that be French lace to your shirt? Pont Argentin, I call them. Why, but it is very fine. Have you seen my new boots? Will you get to your kitchen one? Big, strong man. I am no mind. He dresses like a scarecrow. So when I come through Appen, I will stock a fresh evictions. Is that true? Yes, it's true. But I've consulted with the lawyers. Oh, it's the lawyers again now, is it? We can't fight them with sword and pistol. Well, you cannot fight them with parchment and pen. Huh? Will you listen to me? I will not. Colin Campbell is not going to rest till he's thrown every last loyal Highlander off this land. You think a wee, dusty, penny pension lawyer is going to stop him? You don't understand the man. They sold themselves the Redcoats 30 years ago. What's more to understand? <laughs> you would never listen to another opinion, not even when you were five years old when I first took you in. Please. Colin Campbell's a reasonable man. You hear that, Maggie? The Red Fox. He's called him reasonable. Just lies, deceit, and treachery. And you want to legalize that. I believe you two will be still quarreling beyond the grave. Then you tell him. There is no telling him anything. Nor you. Yeah, you stand in Colin Campbell's way, man. You'll find means to remove you. No. It's the new man we're afraid of, Alan. The London man. Alan wouldn't know of him. I know something of Mr. William Reed. Are you straight away for France? Uh -huh. Good. I've arranged a meeting between you and the Red Fox at the Bear Inn. Because Reed's vowed to catch and hang you before the month's end. It's true, Alan. Well, the hanging's easy. It's the catching that's lost to prove a bit more ticklish. He's a new breed, cold as ice. Oh. James. 
There's your receipt. Will you uh, stay the night? Yeah. Another time, perhaps, Maggie. Aye. That's what you said last time. Mm. Slum shot. After the death of his mother and father, David Balfour said farewell to his friends and neighbours in the village of Essendeen, which lies in the beautiful tranquillity of the Scottish lowlands, where peace reigned. He was off on a journey to seek his fortune, a journey that would take him to the far highlands of Scotland and into the centre of political turmoil and many dangerous adventures. Good morning, sir. Good? Ah, good morning. I've come to say farewell. <laughs> I am sorry to leave Essendeen. Oh, it's a good place indeed, sir. But then I've never been anywhere else. <laughs> True enough. <laughs> well then, to come straight to it. When your mother was gone and your poor father began to sicken for his end, he gave me in charge a certain letter. He said it was your inheritance. Inheritance? So soon as I'm gone, he said, give my boy this letter and start him off to the House of Shaws by Cramond. Uh, what did my father have to do with the House of Shaws, sir? Well, I can't tell for sure, Davy, but the name of the family there is the same name you bear yourself. May I see it, Mr. Campbell? Uh, what? Oh, uh, of course. Your father was a gentleman, of course. No doubt of that. And a learned man, too good for a country schoolmaster. He never talked about his past, Davy. But your mother did once. She hinted at some great quarrel in the family. At least my boy is safe, she said. God forbid he should ever see the house of Shaw's. I'm afraid for you, Davy. Uh, stay here and keep the school as your father did. I'll be all right, sir, I swear. Uh, I, I didn't think I'd persuade you. You'll be wanting to pay your respects. <laughs> so I'll say goodbye. God bless and keep you, Davy, lad. And God bless you, sir. Yeah. There's 
steady on. I thought this meeting would be friendly. Guns are so unnecessary. Ah, you know ordinary boneheaded Jacobite, Alan Breck. You're no ordinary traitor, Colin. Judas himself could have taken a lesson from you. You always did have wit. Eh? Take a drink. You know, I never could understand it. How a clever man like you could throw his life away on such a cause. I would never expect a Campbell to understand the notion of loyalty. Loyalty to what? Face it, man. No Stuart will ever again sit upon the throne. You think not? It's not a notion to be taken seriously. King George took it seriously. I marched with Charlie myself on London. Oh, Bonnie Prince Charlie, eh? I and did the Lowlands rally to him? No. Did England rally to him? No. And what was the result? He turned and he ran. He was betrayed by men just like you, Colin. Just like you. History. History. Think to yourself. What's your life now? You're an exile, a fugitive, a fallen man drowning in his own poverty. Have I had a choice? Join us. Come over to King George and the English cause. Somehow poverty seems to strengthen my resolve, Colin. <laughs> it hardly improves the condition of your people, Alan. Okay. You know our policy is to drive them off the land. Oh, is the policy to burn them off the land? Is the policy to pluck their toys from the hands of our children? Say yes to me and I'll protect them. All of them. James the Glen, he's been a father to you. I'll return his lands tomorrow. Are you of that power? I am the king's factor. Of course I have that power. You'll do it. It'll be done. <laughs> you swear to it? I said you swear to it. You swear to me. All right. I love the drum. Slunger. Slungevar. He's escaped. This may go hard for you. The devil if I'll be questioned by any jumped up Englishman. I answer to no one but the king himself. One word from me, and you'll be packing your wee bag, skulking back to where you came from. Wherever that may be. An idle threat? No, I take him very seriously. Very seriously indeed.
It's loaded. I have a letter from Mr. Ebenezer Balfour of Shaw's. Who's it from? That's no concern of yours. Is he here? Put it down on the doorstep and be off with you. It's a letter of introduction. A what? A letter of introduction. Who are you? My name is David Balfour. Is your father dead? Oh, aye. He'll be dead, no doubt. Well, man, I'll let you in. Touch nothing. Hungry. <laughs> can you eat that bit of porridge? Is that not your own meal? You can have it. Now let's see the letter. I told you before, the letter's for Mr. Balfour. Who do you think I am? Take me for a servant? I keep none. And give me Alexander's letter. You know my father's name? It would be strange if I did not, since he was my brother. Why? I'm your born uncle, Davy, my man, so just give us the letter and sit down and eat your porridge. Do you know what's in it? Uh, you can see for yourself, sir, the seal's not to be broken. But what brought you here? To deliver the letter. Aye, but you'll have had some... Hopes, no doubt. I confess, sir, that when I was told I had kinfolk well to do, I uh, did indulge the hope that they would help me in my life. No doubt, no doubt. But I look for no favours. I'm no beggar. You have the air of one. Uh, well, uh, poor as I appear, sir, I have friends who would gladly help me. Don't fly up in the air at me. We'll agree, fine yet. Well, if you're done with that porridge, I'll just take a bit of it myself. Your father long dead? Three weeks. He was a secret man, Alexander. A secret, silent man. Did he ever say anything about me? I never even knew he had a brother. Oh, dear me, dear me. We'll agree fine yet. I'm glad I let you in. You stay here a while, uh... I have some business to attend to.
You a reader, Davy? A great reader, sir. I meant to ask you before. Your mother? She died two years ago. She was a bonny lassie. Bonnie, bonnie lassie. Was my father very quick at his learning, Uncle? Alexander, no, no, I was the clever one. Why do you ask? Yeah, well, this book's inscribed to you. To my brother Ebenezer on his fifth birthday. What's to that? Oh, you were the elder, were you not? Of course. Well, that's no child's writing. It's our father's hand. I remember now how Alexander asked our father to unscribe the book. Ah, one excellent work of religion. You could do worse than study it, Davy. He left this for you, sir. <laughs> Will you stop laughing? <laughs> Mr. Reed, John Mackenzie's my man. If there's a reprimand to be given, I'll give it. To Colin Campbell, the Red Fox, and Mr. William Reed, of no man knows where. King James VI of Scotland and first of England, whose name of Stuart I have the honour to bear, said this of smoking tobacco. A custom loathsome to the eye, hateful to the nose, and harmful to the brain. <laughs> <laughs> he always had a pretty wit, did Alan Breck. Ah, <laughs> oh, you foolish wee man. It was that stinking pipe of yours lost us the game. Do you never take anything other than porridge, Uncle? Uh, no, no. Never. Davy, I've been thinking, and... Um, 
was some amount of money that I promised, well, half promised you before you were born, promised your father, that is, well, nothing legal, you understand. I kept that bit of money separate. <laughs> It was a great expense, but the promise is a promise. Stay back! Sit down, just sit you down, Davy boy. Careful husbandry, that, uh, that bit of money has now grown to be a matter of just exactly, just, just precisely 60 guineas. 60 guineas? It's an important sum of money. There's more. More, sir? Much more. We're the last of the Balfours of Shaws, you and I, Davy. This is the matter of the estate. It's the question of how affairs will be settled after I am gone and what provision must be made for you now. It's a, it's a complicated business, Davy. We're talking about considerable, not to say extensive, landed property. The, um, the relevant papers, the, uh, the wills, you know, deeds, leases, charters, and grants and such like, I, I, I keep in a chest at the top of the tower. Will you fetch it for me? Of course, Uncle. that door to the top of the tower and uh, you'll see the chest.
my god. Vivi. You're back. Oh, I'm on your heart. Sit down. Sit down. I'll get you caught you. Whatever happened? Uh, the stairs. You had a fall? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, they gave way under me. The whole stair? Dear me. Mm -hmm. Dear me. I've seen... No harm done. There's no harm done. So, you never came at the chest? I was lucky to save my life. Tomorrow morning we'll walk over to Prince Ferry. My lawyer, Rankila, he keeps a copy of every document. And then we'll maybe stop at the inn on the way to see Captain Hoseason of the Brick Covenant. If you have no objection, Dave. Uh, uh, what, uh, whatever. Well, that's kind of you. Well, we'll do that then. and uh, I remember that there are papers to be signed. May I present my second officer, Mr. Ryak? Proud to know you, Mr. Balfour. Uh, this is my brother's son, David Balfour, uh, the heir to Shaw's. Captain? It's an honour indeed, Mr. Balfour. You keep your room uncommon hot, Captain Hussein. I have a cold blood, sir. Well, we must all be the way we're made. David will uh, order meat and drink for us. Porridge and a mug of ale for me, but whatever you fancy for yourself. Don't mind the expense. Thank you, Uncle. Gentlemen. He's a pleasant young man, your nephew. He's um, a troublesome lad. I'd uh, like to be rid of him. Cheer, friend. Aye. Old Daisy Ozzy at home. He's the Ozzy. Skipper of the Brig Covenant. The finest ship that ever sailed. Uh, yes, he's inside. I've got a note for him. I'm cabin boy. Are you really? Now he's a man. He's Daisy Ozzy. Don't care for nothing. Nothing. Heaven or earth. Not him. He'll crack on all sails until the day of judgment. Really? Mark you, he ain't no seaman. That's Mr. Shawan, the navigator's a brig. Now he's the finest seaman in a trade. Only for the drink. Look here. He done that. Mr. Shawan done it. But I'll do for him. I'll get him. It's ready for you. All right.
Are you keen to Ebenezer? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm his brother's son. Mr. Alexander's son? Yes, yes, that's right. You must have been no more than a small baby when, when he died. Uh, my father died three weeks ago, sir. <laughs> There's a grand story against Ebenezer proved false. More's the pity. I don't understand you. What story? That Ebenezer killed his brother. <laughs> no, no, he did not, no. Why would Ebenezer kill his own brother? For the estate, of course. Here is a mystery. If Ebenezer didn't kill his brother, how come he's layered of shawls? Was Alexander the firstborn son? Was he? Of course. Do you know a lawyer by the name of Rankelor, sir? I know him well. Could you direct me to his house, please? It's not ended. <laughs> Here, have a sip of this. He has a high fever. I want him taken out of this hole and put in the forecastle. What you want, Mr. Ryak, is of concern to nobody but yourself. Look, I'm paid, and none too much either, to be second officer of this old tub. I'm paid for nothing more. <coughs> I'm not paid to be a party to murder. Are you saying he'll die, Mr. Ryak? I am. Put him where you please. Up you come on, up you get lad. Come on, lad. Come on, lad. Come on up to him. Just watch that. Look here. One step ahead. It's a curious thing. Mr. Sean, sober, is a quiet, kindly sort of a fellow. And the only true sailor on this whole cursed ship. You see Mr. Sean drunk? He's a raging devil. You know, I don't belong here. <laughs> now me, 
I'm the exact opposite. When I'm sober, I'm a sullen kind of man. I have friends who would pay you handsomely if you helped me. You see, when I'm drunk, which most of the time I am, I'm an angel. Now let me write one line to the Minister Campbell of Essen. If you please, Mr. Reich. I come. I beg you. Nope. Sir, I'm begging you. Life's a seesaw, lad. Now up, now down. Look at me. I'm a laird's son. I, and more than half a doctor. And here I am. Man Jack, the captain host season. Bear up, lad. He was spotted two hours ago. I think he must head either through Craigshield or Draymore. Then split up. You go to Craig Shield, send your ensign to Dray Moore. I assume you have informants in both places? Uh, not that I know of. I suppose we'll have to rely on mine. No, Thomas Clouston's my name. Aye, what was it last time? Robert? Give me those guineas, lad. Give me the guineas. Your passage is arranged and paid for. A French ship, the Bonaventure. Aye, and the order, Captain Parole, is still aboard. On the night of the 4th, she'll light too, just off the coast. There's a bed for you at the inn at Craig Shield. Wait there, friends will come for you. And be careful. Ah, oh, things have changed, Alan. You don't find the same loyalty in the people. And there's a new man sent from London. Aye, that pipe-smoking lucky, Mr. William Reed. I've yet to encounter the man. Well, you'll catch more than a whiff. I hope too soon. I've taken a job as a servant in his own kitchens. That's a dangerous game, you. By all accounts, he's a man to be reckoned with. Food for the prisoner, good lad. Keep him fit and strong now, so he'll fetch a good price, and I'll see to it that you get your fair share. You call that Bristol fashion, Robbie? Sorry, Mr. Swan. Hey, worry, lad, Billy, proper. Aye, aye, sir. Do you know where we're bound? Of course I do. Well? South Carolina. Old Azy Ozy says he'll get 60 guineas for you. What do you mean? <laughs> I've seen him do it too. At the slave auctions, bidding up the price. They're going to sell me into slavery? <laughs> well, old Azy Ozy don't take no passengers aboard his brig. Listen, 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 listen! You help me get away, and I will set you up for life. Put me to a trade, more like. I know a trick or two worth more than any trade. For the love of God, man! Do you not want to escape Mr. John's beatings? Let me see him try it. I stole that. I did. I'll dare him to touch me. I'll kill him. <sighs> he ain't the first. No, Mr. Sean! No! 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 I want you to serve on the roundhouse. You and Ransom are to exchange places.
damn swine! Do you know what you've done? You've murdered the boy! Mr. Ryak, this must never be known. The boy went overboard. That's what the story is. You should have interfered long ago. Give me that! I agree you for that! Come on! I'll skin your leg, you drunken slob! What made you throw a good bottle away? There was no sense in that. Here, David. Throw me another. Through the bottom locker. Look lightly, cost you. For as much as it had pleased Almighty God in his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother here departed. We therefore commit his body to the deep, to be turned into corruption, looking for the resurrection of the body when the sea shall give up her dead. No, sir. There was another boy. Yes, sir. French. Why? Captain Darul! Hey, Captain! Lower the ladder. Bless you, lads. See you safe home now. Mistake here. You have not the look of a French man. Unlike you, sir. You have a French soldier's coat upon your back and a Scotch tongue in your head. Step aboard. Well, an invitation so prettily put cannot be well refused. I take it you're no Jacobite. I take it you are. As to my causes, let me tell you where I stand. I am for the prosperity of myself and my crew, and against everything else. You're a practical man. I hope so. I have an uncommon hunger and thirst. There's a remedy for that, sir. If you step into the roundhouse. Thank you, Captain. This way. Out of that way. Yes, I was bound for France. There was a French ship cruising here about to pick me up, but she must have given me to go by in the fog. So if you can set me ashore to where I was going, you'll have the means to reward you highly for your trouble. In France? Oh, no, sir, that I cannot do. But where you come from, we might talk of that. Uh, Daddy, run after the galley and fetch some meat for the gentleman. Lively now. Better off where he is. He won't be able to swing his sword. True, but he'll be hard to come at.
half of it, and I'm your man. I told you. That one penny that belongs to me belongs to another. Now I'd be a fool not to spend some of that so that the rest might come safe. But sir, I'd be a dog indeed to spend that much on my safety. A hundred guineas, that's my price. Fifty. Done. And here's my hand on it. We'll alter course at once. I'll see to it. Thank you, lad. <clears throat> so you're a Jacobite? Aye. And you, by your long face, should be for King George. Betwixt and between. Mr. Betwixt and between. This battle of yours is dry. I'm paying 50 guineas for the cruise. Be a hard thing to begrudge me a dram. I'll go and ask the captain for the key. You have your pistol, Captain. He has two. The other firearms are locked up in the roundhouse. Here's our chance to get the firearms. Um, uh, the gentleman's seeking a drink, Captain, and the uh, bottle's dry. Would you give me the key? Davy, my man. That wild Highlander is a danger to the ship. Besides being a rank enemy to King George, God save him. Aye, we've swords and cutlasses enough in the forecastle. But the firearms are in the roundhouse, under his nose. If I, or Mr. Ryak, was to go in to get them, he might start thinking. But a lad like you, Davy, you could snap up a pistol or two without remark. Do it cleverly, and I'll bear it in mind when we come to South Carolina. Here's the bit of money that you had on you. With my apologies, Davy. I had 60 guineas on me. Davy, your uncle took that. And see here, that Jacobite has a belt full of gold. And I give you my word, you shall have your fingers in it. You want to be killed? Why? Is that how the wind sets? They're all murderers here. It's a ship full of them. Now, they've already murdered a boy, and you, Mr. Jacobite, are next. Well, they haven't got me yet. Would you stand with me? I'm no murderer. I'm no thief. I will. Good. What's your name, lad? My name is David Balfour of Shaw's. Of Shaw's? Indeed. My name is Stuart. Alan Breck, they call me. I'm not a better plane. <laughs> Got nothing to clap onto behind the end of that. <laughs> I have the keys to that. Don't lose them. There are three ways to come at us here, Davy. These windows, that skylight, and the door. I'll shut the door. Not so. I've got one face. And so long as that door is open and my face is to it, I have my enemies in front of me. That's what I prefer to fight them. Can you use a sword? I never have. Cutlass, then? No. A dark? No. Could you contrive to pull a trigger? I'll climb and load these pistols for you. Of course I can. And my father used to take me hunting rabbits. Well, thanks, Mr. God, for that. But I'm not a very good shot. Aye, but you'll admit to it. Bravely said. And none of your soldier would not dare to say that.
that's a tight set. That's a pity. I'm all going to get up on guard. Follow me close. It is my part to keep this door. I look for the main battle. Stay with the bed, you guard that window, and that skylight. I too have but one face, Mr. Stewart. I can't... I bet your ear is on either side of it. They have to break the glass. There you go. You have some rudiments of sense. Come on, lads! Come on, lads! Steady, Daddy! The crew is coming! Fighter! We'll have to parley. Nothing else for it. I have these buttons from my father, Duncan Stewart. He died when I was a boy. He was the greatest sword in the Highlands. I want you to take that as a keepsake for what you've done. And wherever you go, you show that. And my friends will come round you. Behind the roundhouse! Ahoy! Roundhouse! Will you parley? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll offer you an exchange. That against two buckets of water. And if he's alive, I'll speak to your captain. Oh, he's alive, all right. <laughs> ah, that's more than he deserves.
husband a hand in it. Ahoy, the roundhouse! Ahoy, the roundhouse! You've made a sore hash of my brick, sir. A son of my choosing. I'll give you 30 guineas to set me on dry shore at Arden American. I haven't men enough to work this ship. And my navigator, Mr. Soon, has had your sword through his vitals. Fifty. Thirty. If I hadn't lost so much money on this plaguey cruise, I'd see you at the rope's end. Captain, as I would a snake in the grass. <laughs> you see that? That's gold. Would you keep it for me? Till we're safe ashore. If you want. That's a trust. I'm putting to you, man. I told you before. I'm no thief. That's not what I mean. You heard a tax. My people pay it. And heavily too, dear King George. But they're true, David. They've toiled and bled for many a year and they scrape up a second tax. That's it. That's for the true king of this country. He's just over the water there for a while in France. They pay tax to two kings. Aye, and you're looking at the man that carries it. Well, I'll be honest. I am for King George. I am. But I call that noble. Noble. Their hearts are staunch, David. I will look after your gold as if it were my own. See, I believe you will. But let me tell you something more. You see, when Bonnie Prince Charlie was running for his life, there was a price put of 30,000 pounds for his head. Not one man, woman or child in all the Highlands ever betrayed him. Now you think on that, Mr. Betwixt and Between?
powder's dry. Get moving! Move! Go on! Robbie! Search him! Get that money! There's nothing. It's with the boy. Then you've killed him! Aye. <laughs> with a weight like that round him, he'll drown for sure. <laughs> Sunk like a stone. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, half dead by the look of it. But be alert, men. These Highlanders are full of tricks. You're a day behind him. He's alive. He had that appearance about him. Uh. Well, which direction did he take? Westward. Towards his own place. And what place would that be? Well, I'll tell you. Since you bear his token. A car. Safe here. Ah. Alan, listen. Wish now. Ah. Your man Reed. You have no case to talk. Uh, there's a plot. Something deep. A, a killing, Alan. Ah. Oh, I have no name, but to lay the blame on James of the Glen. Oh, easy now. <laughs> easy now. On the 14th day of May, the woods of Lettermore. Oh. Easy now. 
Let's see here now. I'll fetch you a drink. Give a drum with you. Uh, water. Water. Yun. Yun. your brave soul. Akarn! You'd go south by east, through the woods of Lettermore. But stay, I take that road myself. I'll walk with you, if you don't object to bear company with a blind man. Sarah, I would be honoured. Your speech tells me you're a stranger, a lowlander, perhaps. Perhaps. Aye, that's a young man's voice. A gentleman's voice. Perhaps. These are all my eyes, young master. May I know the look of you? Go on. Would you take my stick? Aye. You have the features of a true gentleman. As every lowland man as silent as yourself, young master. I was just observing these people here. They don't look like Highlanders at all. There's no tartan, no Celts on any of them. Did you not know that King George has put a legal ban upon the Highland dress? Aye. No tartan. No kilt. No bagpipes, neither. That's to break the spirit of the clans. <laughs> He's disappeared, sir. Disappeared? Men don't disappear, Captain Forbes. Evidently, he had an accomplice. They didn't leave any tracks. How badly was he wounded? Judging from the blood, mortally. Let's hope so. Do you know who he was? A serving man in your kitchen? He was a spy. He used the name Cluson, but his true name is Ewan of Appin. Did you learn much, Mr. Reed? Is that the song of a bird I hear? Aye, it is. Would you be a Christian and fetch me a sup of water, young master? Aye, aye, of course. Well, Flora. You can stop there. 
I don't know how you dare to show your face. There's much I dare. You've not forgotten, surely. I've not forgotten. Nor forgiven, Alan. What do you want? Just a bed for the night. If you have one. I do not. Not for you. Is that your baron? And where's Donald? Donald is in London. Why London? He has a petition to King George to restore his estate. The king is in France, Flora. We scrimped and starved long enough. We have a bane. You know, I can believe a poor wee pluck of a man like Donald would bend his knee to King George. But not you, Flora. Just not you. I'd have died for you, Alan Breck. Such a love I had. But your king over the water whistled for you and you were gone. My king! Your king! Your king! And you sheltered his son, Prince Charlie himself, in your own father's house. They burnt my father's house! They drove our people off the land! I had no man to turn to save Donald. A poor wee plaque of a man, you called him. Well, he stood by me. He wed me. And it cost him dear. You left me naked, Alan, and that's the truth of it. Ready, man. It's nine o'clock. We've a long ride to a cabin. Do you want to evict James of the Glen or not? I'm perfectly ready. I see you like your comforts, Mr. Reed. Well, any fool can be uncomfortable. Good day, sirs. Good day to you both. Uh, I'm bound for a car. Could you tell me, is this the right road? These are the woods of Lettermore, lad. What do you want in a car? A man who lives there. And who are you? I'm an honest subject of King George, sir. Very well said. But if I might be so bold, why is such an honest man so far from his own country? <laughs>
safe, Mr. Reed. He's been shot. This boy's an accomplice. No, I'm not. He was put here to keep us talking. Get after him. Sergeant! Andre! This crime at James's door. He'll be making for a card. What the devil were you doing in the woods at Lettermore? Following you. Well, come away, man. You entrusted something to me which I felt it was my duty to return to you. And there, there it is. I thank you for getting me away, but now we part. I'll hardly part from the Davy. There's a man lies dead down there! And the weapon that slew him is there! In your hand! Don't you think I killed him? Goodbye, Mr. Stewart. I doubt that we shall ever meet again. Hey, David. Where the devil do you think you're going? Home! Home! Man, you're not gonna make five miles before they catch you! That's my affair! At least hear my defense! Defense? What defense? What defense? I like you very, very well! But your ways are not mine, and they are not God's! Oh, he shoot! Come on, you! Now that we've got you, let's have your name. Your name! Breck! Alan Breck! Would you have the goodness to order your men to lay down their arms, Captain? Do it. Ground your arms. And your sword! If you please. You can't win, you know. You can hide yourself away in this godforsaken country, but I'm a persistent man. I'll find you, Mr. Stewart. And I'll hang you. Would you walk with me, sir? You'd be well advised to shoot me now, Mr. Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> 
Or shoot a man in cold blood? Is that what the English do? That's not the Highland way, Mr. Lee. Fatal flaw in the Highland character, Mr. Stewart. <laughs> well, perhaps I should shoot you. But it's not loaded. As you say. Why don't we keep the horses? Because we're safer on foot. You are the boldest peacock of a man I've ever come across. And it seems I have to thank you once again. But I can't change my opinion. You killed a man in cold blood. You know who that man was? It was a man, an innocent man. It was your king's factor. That's your defence. Now, I tell you, Mr. Balfour of Shores, as a friend, if I were about to kill Campbell of Glenore, it would not be in Stuart country to bring trouble on my own people. What trouble? I told you William Reeb will lay this murder at the door of my kinsman. He'll hang him if he can. He'll throw his people off the land. Uh, with no proof? He's a Stuart. Can you understand that? That's the proof. Well, how did you come by that gun, then? The murderer struck me a blow with it. He ran off before I could see his face. Here, you can see for yourself with the blow, sir. Aye. Well, you've taken a knock, certainly. Huh? What would you have me do? Swear upon the Holy Cross? I'll do it. No, I believe you. And I thank God for that. Right you know, you never let me speak my defense. Before condemning me. Justice? What justice? I was here, in our Khan, when the murder was done. I have a score of my people to swear to it. Aye, your people, James. Stewards of Appen. This is a Campbell that's been killed. Listen to him, James. You'll be tried at Fort William. There'll be 15 Campbells in the jury box, and the biggest Campbell of them all, the Duke of Argyle, on the bench. Oh, for God's sake. Now, you'll take to the heather with me away to France. No. It's best, James. Hold your tongue, woman. How many times must I tell you? This is a plot by Reed. Now, he won't be thwarted. Hey, see you hey! Red courts. Will you run? No. Then we fight. Madness, Alan, of your making. You're not the chieftain here, Percy. It'll give you time, man. For what? To din some sense into that stubborn old head of yours. Look at here, lads.
Gone! Not quite! This is folly. Lay down your arms! You best lay down your own. You'd be wise to... Soldiers! to stay. You and your friends slip away now, while you have the chance. They will hang together, James. For once in your life, Alan Breck, you'll listen to me. For the sake of my people, I'll give myself over. Why do you persist? Listen to me. I have only one hope for my life, and that's you. Find the one who did the murder. If any man in Scotland can do it, you can. Find him. Produce him to the court with proof of the plot. And no Campbell jury can ever hang me. I am James Stewart of the Glen. Mr. Reed. We must cleanse the Highlands, Captain Forbes. That's my duty. And it's your duty. You see King George's men at their work. 
where he has stand now. Is there a twist in between? Just find the real murderer and drag him into court. That doesn't sound simple to me at all. Unless you have some sort of clue. Well, I'd be something of a fool to say about this business if I'd not. For all that, it's a dangerous game. And you're not obliged to play. Do I have a choice? You do. You've luck. They haven't your name. And our friends will see you safe into the lowlands. James of the Glen is as innocent of murder as I am myself. As a gentleman, I could say as an honest subject of King George. But I say as a gentleman, it is my duty to see justice done if I can. Well, that's well said, lad. My hands on that. You'll hold this gold for me again, then. If you like. Why? I don't know. I see you're honest. But I think you've the luck. Luck? Aye, the luck. Since I've left Essendine, I've been assaulted. I've been kidnapped. I've had my uncle tried to murder me. I've been attacked by a blind man. And I've been chased and harried half out of my wit. That's exactly my meaning. It's a bloody miracle you're alive, man. I've fallen in step two. Where are we going? For William. But that's a garrison town. It's full of redcoats. Aye, and it's the last place in Scotland that we think it'll look for us. Right, well, we won't have to look very hard if we show ourselves. Don't remind me not to march and play in my bagpipes and wear my kilt above my ears. I say, Tom, come on. That's a rather fine pistol. And I'm as fine as the tavern I've got my eye on. Come on. <laughs> Here you are now, and mind the bye for Thank you. It's an odd made piece, Alan. Very odd. I've seen nothing like it before. Are you selling for shame, Angus? And you, an elder of the church? I take a Bible, oh. Every time! Now, you tell me the name of the man you made it for. I never knew his name. He would have been a fool to give it, and I would have been a greater fool to ask it. What do you use that? The blow at that canny brain of yours? Well, I can give you his clan. Give me the name! Well, it was a Campbell killed. A MacDonald. Yes, a MacDonald he was. Mr. Reed. Sir, I know where Alan Breck Stewart is. No, sir. I've not seen a living soul all morning. Nor's the pity. Trade bad, is it? Terrible bad, son. As bad as your memory? Can I play one favor of you, Davy? Of course. Look, the less you say and the less you notice here now, the better for me. 
Duncan MacDonald, he's no open-minded man. He's no time for lowlanders, and he hates King George worse than poison. I hope I don't offend you. Certainly not. Still, he was once the power here, you see. <clears throat> he was the clan chief. Just not now. Good evening, dear miss. Sir. My name is Alan Brick Stewart. I know the name. Aye. Is the Earl at home? He is. I might I crave ten minutes' conversation with him? Come in, sir. Sirs. A moment, if you please, Mr. Stewart. That man had five sons, and he lost them all. And that'd be the granddaughter, Mary. One bonny lassie. Oh, she's all right. But you don't agree? Well, I've hardly had time to form an opinion. Well, how much time do you need? A glance is enough, I always say, if a lad likes the look of a lass. And a lass likes the look of a lad. You may go in now, Mr. Stewart. Thank you. Will you take some refreshments, sir? Uh, no, no, thank you. So you're not accustomed to Highland manners? It's a great tradition here to offer hospitality to a stranger and a great offence for a stranger to refuse. Oh, I, I, I apologise, Miss MacDonald. May I know your name? There are bills posted around every town and village for the capture of Alan Breck Stewart and his companion. My name is David Balfour of Shaw's. Honoured, Mr. Balfour. Now be gone from the house, sir. Uh, be gone. There have been grievances between us. That's the past. Grievances? There's been bloodshed. Let's bury him now all this time. We still have a common cause. I don't believe any kin of mine had a hand in the murder. But if one did, then I honor him for sending another Campbell to hell. James of the Glen is on a rope here, man. Be gone from my house. Curse on you. You're a fool. Gotta go back to Fort William now to get him. What? It's always the same. You look for help, you get none, and it always comes down to this. Are you mad altogether? They'll guard them as closely as the crown jewel. Closer, I should think. Mr. Stewart, I have a kinsman, Hamish MacDonald. Mary! Get you back to the house. And you, get off my land before I shoot you. Tell them, Grandfather. Tell them Hamish shot him. Mary, get back to the house. Will you shoot me if I don't? By the living God, I'd be justified. You betrayed your own kin. My kin? What kin? Who's left? Get away, girl. Where's my father? Dead. Where's my mother? Dead through grief like her own wife. Where are your sons? Dead. 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 You killed them all with your blood feuds and your damnable obstinate murderous pride. I will help you to bring him to justice. You'll find him at the head of Glen Coolish. Go by way of King Kelly. There's a path leading over Loch Ryan. You'll find him at the head of the Glen. Strange, I never heard of any such a path. You think you know everything, Alan Breck? Mary will show you the way. There's porridge, mate, Grandfather, and cold beef and cheese in the larder. Ach, away, girl. If you kill him, Alan Breck, I'll hunt you down like a dog. Well, why rob the hangman of his fee? They're insane. Here, 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 and here. That's Duncan MacDonald's land, the Earl of Dunbray. You're very well informed. I have been here three years. The MacDonalds of Dunbray and the Stuarts of Appin are clan enemies. Mind you, the old Earl has some feud or other against half the Highlands. Good. Why so? 
Mark 325. If a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. A difficult old relic like the Earl is worth a regiment to it. Yes. I see what you mean. I hear to be made the king's factor. Nothing's been decided. I think you're a man who gets what he wants. Oh, that's because I never allow myself to want what I think I cannot get. Is Shaw's a very great place, Mr. Balfour? I believe it is, yes. You don't know? My uncle has the house and lands at present. Ah, and you're his heir? Well, I believe I am the legal owner. When my father died, I discovered that he was the elder son and my uncle the younger. Yet he has the property. Well, that's strange. There has been some great wrong, Miss MacDonald, some... <coughs> Advance! Keep your eyes peeled out! There he is! Back up! Keep your eyes Be making for Glen Coolish. Why on earth would they do that? Well, it'll be trouble if we don't get there before them. We still have a chance to catch Alan Breck Stewart. I'm no fighting man, and I never pretended to be. Then you should learn to be. If you want justice for yourself with your uncle, as you see. In the lowlands, Miss MacDonald, we don't get justice through the sword. How do you get it, then? Through the law. The law? Aye, the law. Because we're civilised people, not savages. I've always heard tell of you as a great fighting man, Mr. Stewart. Aye. The best in the Highlands. Well, you could say I was born to it. I've heard tell of you since I was a child. <laughs> you fought at Culloden, did you not? Aye. I did. Even my grandfather would speak of you with respect. <laughs> well, that's pleasing to know. I think a man could be judged for other qualities more than his handiness with a sword. Are you going to speak in defense of your friend? He's Mr. a young Stewart. man. That's noble of you. He's got considerable book learning. Do you place a value on that? I do. I wish I'd more of that in line myself. I think he's a gentleman, too.
That's where he is. Does your cousin know you well by sight? Aye, he does. Be best to go alone. No, I'll come with you. No. You wait here. Hamish MacDonald is a dangerous man. Alan Breck is a brave one. Or foolhardy. He knows fine what he's capable of. You can't call such a man foolhardy. You seem to admire him greatly, Miss MacDonald. Don't you, Mr. Balfour? noise. We'll have to warn him. His own ears will warn him. Are you a coward? Use your brains, woman. There's nothing to be done. Take your hand off me. Now, Mr. MacDonald, let me tell you what's to be. You and I will go to Fort William. And you'll swear a statement before the justice. And you'll tell the truth. You killed Campbell of Glenor for money. Now, who paid you? Was it William Reed? McDonald! about it. You may arrest this man too. His name is MacDonald. He murdered the Red Fox. What are you talking about? He was paid to do it by a gentleman of your acquaintance, Mr. William Reed. Let go of that man! Attack me. Self defense. I assume you have a family crest, Mr. Balfour of Shaw's. I suggest a new motto for it. In Latin, of course. There's nothing to be done.
Unfortunately, you ought to be tried in Edinburgh, Mr. Stewart, on a charge of high treason. So I won't have the pleasure of hanging you myself. I can't deny it's a disappointment. But the law's the law. Alan? Did you find the man? I uh, did. It's too late now. He's dead. And all is lost? They try me tomorrow. A whole pack of Campbells, just as you said. Dear God, to think I brought this on you. I brought it on myself. That's nonsense, man. I let a stubborn old fool do what he thought best. I knew more. Curse you, Alan Breck. Will you quarrel with me on the very steps of the scaffold? I should have forced you into the hills. I never would have run. You'd have had no choice. Not at the end of my dunk. Dear God. You know, I don't know why. I always put such a value to your life. Never my own. You're a mule, man. You're a mule. We must do something. What? Rouse the McDonald's. March on Fort William. Michael. Why not? You're talking nonsense, girl. I agree. You're not a fighting man, Mr. Balfour. You say so yourself. No, but I flatter myself that I have a brain. Now, if we Mr. Can... Balfour... Wished. If we can contrive to give Alan the means, I believe he can effect his own escape. That's true. In the hands of such a man, a, a pistol or a dirk. Well, it, it'd be as good as a key to him. But how? Are you known by sight to any at the prison? No. Nor am I. Now, if we can stop quarrelling for one minute, then perhaps we have a chance. Thank you, no. I have a question, Mr. Reed, to which I demand an answer. The man you shot. In self-defense. Was he the murderer of Campbell the Red Fox? He was. Did you pay him to do it? Naturally. <laughs> God! And this is the way you serve King George. I serve the king as the king would wish to be served. Efficaciously. False. Come of a good family, but alas, not one endowed with much in the way of money. What do you mean, sir? Well, since you have not the means to purchase promotion, you must get it by your own merit. And your superiors think very highly of your merit, Captain. My superiors? Well, you don't suppose I could have acted alone in a matter so grave? No, 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 no. Men far greater than I or you gave it their sanction. They think very highly of you. They have it in mind to give you a regiment. Think of it. A colonel at the age of 26. Now, you see, Campbell of Glenio is not a sound man. Too soft on his own people. I am a sound man. And I believe you are too. A thoroughly sound man. James of the Glen, you are summoned to trial. Well, Alan, if they condemn me, as they're sure to do, they'll hang me straight away. May we speak? I 
never knew you lost for words. It's not the end, Alan. We'll carry on our quarrels in a better place than this. It's time. Trust in God, Alan. His mercy and his justice. No good. They've taken him from the prison. Listen to me. Listen to me, all of you. Listen to me, I say. Hear the word of God in the 35th Psalm. Plead thou my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me, and fight thou against them that fight against me. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be as dust before the wind, for they have laid their net to destroy me without cause. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things I knew not. Oh, deliver my soul from the calamities which they did bring on me. Judge me, O Lord my God, according to thy righteousness. Man that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is put down by blood. He flees on the bloody chair. Feeling rather hungry, Captain. Go for some lunch. If you'll forgive me, I have other duties. of the red coats yet. Well, well, the sooner you're in the lowlands, the better for you and for me. With the coach, we could bring them there in a few days. We've done enough. More than enough. We'll go home and lie low. Devilish low. We'll cross the Firth by the Bridge of Stirling. Aye. Most likely. Good luck, Mr. Stewart. Mr. Balfour, I hope we may meet again someday. I hope so too. Let's 
Take you back to the lowlands, Davy, and your house are shores. It's a fine country. Do you not think so, David? It's a wilderness. <laughs> you lowlanders. You've plenty of brains. But you've no poetry to your souls. Well, from what I've seen of you Highlanders, you have a deal too much poetry and not enough brains. <laughs> That's the hue. Corinaki. Not many mortal men have passed this way. I don't doubt it. Really excellent. Very good. Could do with a little salt, but it's very good. <laughs> what? It could. It could do with salt. You're better than a tonic to me. <laughs> Sometimes I don't understand you at all. I've often observed. <laughs> so were you caught in a lassie when you left home? No. No broken hearts left behind? No. Hmm. I suppose you've broken many hearts. No. Only one. She was everything to me. But I was married. Oh, my sword. And my king. Alan, will you teach me to use a sword? Why? You want to be a fighting man? I just think it's, uh... A skill every man should acquire. On guard. Allez. Not a great beginning. Not bad, baby. Just don't hurt yourself. More weapons than me. Brains. Brains. <laughs> what 
What is it? Oh, thank God, man. You're carrying the weight of the gold. <laughs> you look drunk, huh? No, I'm fatigued as well. Hmm? You're right. Hi. <laughs> Have a sleep. Just give me ten minutes. And I'll be fine. Man, Francis, look at your God, love you, you're fat as a cow. <laughs> Where's your old man? Get rid of that hat, you blocker. <laughs> there he is, the sweetest lads you'll ever have a chance to know. It's a rare privilege you'll have in your life to meet men like these. Come along, lads. <laughs> Where is the blackguard, huh? Where is he? <laughs> These are the sons of Clooney McPherson, man. We fought the English together. He's wanted by the Crown. The Crown, the Parliament, and the Red Coast. He's probably more hunted than him myself. I thought he was in hiding in France. Eh, the Clooney lives like a fighting cock in his own country, with his own people. You'll have a taste of the real hiding life now, man. Oh. What is it? Oh, don't die on me now, Davy. <laughs> Come along. Hello, Lander. Through and through. No <laughs> drink. Oh. <laughs> You're carrying the weight of the gold. Ah, come here, I'll carry your boat. <laughs> You'll have a rest in Clooney's cave. Clooney! Clooney! <laughs> I live like a lord, man. I'm not one to sit and twirl my thumbs and Mourned about the great days gone by. Ah, they'll come back again. They can leave old Scotland to a copper plaque to that. <laughs> you better, Davy? A little, I think. And step to the table, Mr. Balfour assures. I would not conceal your name from Clooney, Davy. <laughs> I'll keep your secret, Mr. Belfer. I think you could lay 10,000 guineas to a farthing on that. Eat, Davy. I make you welcome to my house which is a queer, rude place for certain, but one where I've entertained a royal personage. Doubt you should know the person is I refer to, Mr. Stewart, since you bear his name. Aye, aye, aye. Aye, and a bonny, gracious, spirited prince he is, and mighty partial to his drab. I drink a toast to his father. The king or the water? To the king. <laughs> Do you not drink the toast, Mr. Balfour? He's a lowlander. Doesn't drink. Doesn't drink. <laughs> I have a headache. I think I'll take some here. Miss 
Just a bowl for a short, eh? And what would his politics be, Alan? I had hopes of improving them. But so far, you failed. How's your head, Mr. Balfour? Better? <laughs> if you do me the honor of joining us in a game of cards, Mr. Stuart here proposes, so he says, <laughs> to fleece me down to the stitches in my pocket. <laughs> I prefer not to, sir. Are you afraid to wager your money, Mr. Balfour of Shaw's? <laughs> Ah, you have the look of a... Uh, He's a tight-fisted man. <laughs> He's a tight-fisted man. <laughs> I could plead sickness as the cause of my refusal, sir. But I will not. I made my father a promise. Never to gamble at the cards. As it is no business of a Christian or of a gentleman. Oh, the devil is this. <laughs> oh, can a captain steady? No, 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 steady. He's Cronin McPherson to be preached to in his own place. Oh, man, you've sons your own. Well, what's that got to do with you? expect him to honor your notions of what's right. Uh, better are they, Fuba Bacama. I owe him the same duty. No, but I'm giving him away. Come on, come away. Inside, women proper. Inside. Yeah. Start with a four. Seven. Eight. Nine. Eleven. Nine. And is it? Is it Jack? Jack! No! No! It's a queen! Jack! Queen! No, Jack! 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 Seven. Five. Nine. <laughs> Are your fleece, Mr. Stewart? Have your more in your pocket, or only stitches? Oh, can you use this? Hey! Lay out the cards, Cloney. <laughs> Did you win? Did I win? I lost! All of it? Every penny of it! You lost it all! Yours and mine! Don't believe it! <laughs> that was my money too! You Highlanders, you fools! I can't tolerate your way of life any longer. David, this is not the way. No way for two friends to take such a matter. Oh, and how should I take it? David, I owe you my life. 
Now I owe you some money. A gentleman would try to make the burden light. Try to see the reason. You stand there and tell me how a gentleman should behave. I think you've much to learn upon the subject, man. You gamble your prince's gold at cards, and you stand there and preach to me about what a gentleman should do. What are you talking about? I never risked a penny of it. Oh, I saw the money on the table. I never, ever suggest that I betray my cause. Why not? Your cause is lost, isn't it? It's the past! Scotland decided. We chose King George. Who's going to rise up against us? You? You? Your time is over. You Stuarts, you lost the throne through your own follies and vices. And you know it. As for your bonny Prince Charlie, what did he do? What did he really do? He brought ruin and destruction and civil war to the Highlands. And he wasn't even Scottish. Your cause is lost, and you know it. there, just beyond the hill. Wait here. Captain, they've been sighted. Where? About two miles to the north. Sergeant? Sir? Fall in the men. Sir? Stand to, men! Stand to! Press company! Withdraw your pickets! There we are, Captain. Patience and perseverance. Now. It's my daughter's college. Down on the floor. 
Stand to, men. Oh. I'm Mary MacDonald of Dumbray. My grandfather, the Earl, is gravely ill. My apologies, ma'am. Let them pass. Your vote, your timing's impeccable. It's Mary you have to thank. I said it could cost us our necks. I said Alan Breck needed no aid from us, but you wouldn't have it. Grandfather. Mr. Balfour's health, it seems, is her great concern. So you just happened to be on the road? We were fairly certain that you'd make for the, the Bridge of Stirling, so... We took a lodging in the inn and waited. It isn't only the redcoats that have their spies. What the devil are you at? Let me pass. Curse it, do you know who I am? I am the Earl of Dunbrook. We're almost safe, Grandfather. Gentlemen, we're in the lowlands. Oh. <clears throat> we made it, David. We made it. several hours ago. I swear there were no others. Only the old man and his granddaughter. Cross the bridge, Captain. Continue the pursuit. Send me word when they're found. You want me to pursue them on my own? I have no authority beyond this point. If they're mine to hang, bring them to me, Captain. Sir, do you want promotion? Get on with it. Go and catch a falling star. Get with child a mandrake root. Tell me where all past years are, or who cleft the devil's foot. Teach me to hear mermaids singing, or to keep off envy stinging, and find what wind... Miss MacDonald, uh, I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to thank you for coming to our aid. Uh, and I, I wanted to apologize to you I believe I called you a savage. There's no need to apologize. Well, I, I take it back unreservedly. <laughs> Forgive me, Mr. Balfour, but you're so serious. I go this morning to learn my fate from the lawyer Rankiller. You come back and tell me how it turns out? And if you got your estate back? I would like that very much.
So, you're bound for France. Aye. Well, take that with you when you go. Don't gawk, man. Take it. And you can tell his majesty he still has loyal friends among the McDonald's of Dunbray. You shake the hand of an Upland steward. Drum, Captain Forbes. What would we drink to? The future and the demise of Mr. William Reed. Uh, I'm here to see Mr. Rankiller. There is no great mystery, Mr. Balfour. And there was no great wrong. Until your uncle's wicked attempt at kidnap, at which I still shudder. Your father, Alexander Balfour, and his brother Ebenezer both fell in love with the same lady, a Miss Pitaro. My mother? Aye, your mother. The estate of Shaw's is entailed. Uh, do you know what that means? I know, sir. It means that it can never be sold, but must be passed on entire from generation to generation. Now, your father was the firstborn son. I discovered that. He therefore inherited Shaw's. Your uncle Ebenezer had nothing except the misguided affection of Miss Pitaro, which he used to force a bargain. Your father to make over his rents, your uncle to give up the lady. My father gave away all his rents for the love of my mother. Ah, he did, but only for his lifetime. The day that he died, you became the legal owner of Shaw's. You are the owner. Small wonder that Ebenezer wanted you dead. Well, that's a civil welcome indeed. One step nearer, you're a dead man, Mr. Highlander. And a civil speech to go with it? Let it go. I just come for a business. As I said. You did not say what? There's been a lad who was cast up on the shores of Ardemarkin. Alive? Well, certainly alive, sir. David Balfour. Tedious long business to nurse the boy back to health. It was a great expense. I no doubt. Just say on, Mr. Highlander. Well, sir, a man's a fool to be spending his money in that way. <laughs> Without giving a thought to a return. We return. <laughs> well, that's true. Well, we uh, we agree together there, Mr. Highlander. If it just come to my mind, you might be a wee bit more to have him dead. Just what put that into your mind? Well, there was something he let slip, sir, when the fever was on him. You did have him kidnapped. Aboard the brig. 
for 60 guineas. 60 guineas? Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did he say that? I never paid a penny piece, man. I didn't have to. They took him for the price of his hide at a slave auction. <laughs> Kid, that cost me nothing. <laughs> Not a copper coin. That will serve excellently well. Good day, Mr. Balfour. May I present Mr. Crawford? <laughs> He's a magistrate. He heard every word and will witness to it. There is another door. I have the key. Mr. Balfour, take your hands off that money, sir. It is not yours. He can take my rents. He can't take my gold. Not the gold I've saved. That's not what the law says. He can't take my gold. The law in this case states that any monies derived from the estate which are unspent remain the property of the estate. No, oh, it's a lie. It's a damnable lie. In short, sir, every penny you've scrimped and hoarded through your miserable life belongs to your nephew, David Balfour. Poor, miserable wretch. waiting nearby to take them to France. With your permission, we must proceed on foot. Form columns. Forming columns! Forward. Double forward! I suggest you wait here until I've got my men into position. I trust there'll be no more mistakes, Captain. You can be sure of that, Mr. Reed. Prepare the left wheel! Forgive me, sir, but this isn't the way to the coast, surely. We're not going to the coast, Lieutenant. We're going back to the barracks at Cramond. But, sir, uh, I thought... That was Mr. Reed's order. Did you question it? No, sir, of course not. Very wise. He's not a man to cross. Carry on, Lieutenant. Come on. You're mistaking me for a gentleman, Mr. Stewart. I've no intention of fighting you. You'll have to kill an unarmed man. And I wonder which is the greater, your sense of honor or your hatred of me. Good day to you, Mr. Stewart. Thank <laughs> you. 
Here's a pardon gift for you, Davy. I can't take your sword, take Alan. Take it. I got no use for it now. You hanging on the wall in your great house. No doubt you'll be having sons now. You could tell them it came from kings. You've acquired some poetry to your soul now. Alan Breck Stewart and David Balfour never met again. Alan went on to have a distinguished career in the French army. He died in Paris at the age of 65. David Balfour married Mary MacDonald, and Alan was right. They did have sons. They were neither Highlander nor Lowlander. They were Scots. <laughs> <laughs>